Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and these are my real first thoughts and impressions of the new Samsung Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S7 Edge. Should be pretty simple. So there are two phones this year, a 5.1 inch Galaxy S7 and a 5.5 inch Galaxy S7 Edge. So no Edge Plus or any weird naming. These are the only two phones. And they'll look familiar because, well, on the surface, they are very similar to the Galaxy S6 we already know. And actually, because they're so similar, They've gotten really upstaged by some other announcements this week, like the LG G5, but Samsung took what was already a pretty good phone with the Galaxy S6 and then fixed most of the worst parts about it. The Galaxy S7 is what feels like a slightly refined, improved, just better polished version of its predecessor. So first of all, it comes in four colors this time, an actually black phone, not blue, so that's cool, a gold platinum, a silver titanium, and a white pearl. And just overall fit and finish of the familiar design is a little bit better. They curve the glass on the back now, like they did with the Note 5, making it a little bit easier to hold. And it's now fully IP68 water resistant with pretty much no added bulk or flaps or anything weird like that. So no worries about using your phone in the rain or near water. And can we all just take a second to appreciate that Samsung actually just made their new phone one millimeter thicker to accommodate a larger battery. Thank you, Samsung. I haven't been preaching to a brick wall. It is much appreciated. Also, the camera bump on the back is now greatly reduced. It's not totally flat, but it's less of a pain when the phone is on a table. And the home button slash fingerprint reader on the front is also more flat. So yeah, it just looks and feels in a subtle way like a smoother, slightly refined version of the S6, kind of like the iPhone 6S was for the iPhone 6. So I guess you can think of this as like a Galaxy S6S which really isn't that bad. Uh, people are quick to forget that the Galaxy S6 was one of the best phones of 2015, and in a lot of ways, the Galaxy S7 is following up on that. The Galaxy S6 had what was considered by most to be the best display on any smartphone. Samsung's bringing that back with this really bright Quad HD Super AMOLED display here on the Galaxy S7. It also had one of the best cameras in any smartphone, and Samsung has again improved on this, bringing a new 12 megapixel sensor with larger pixels, a wider f1.7 aperture, and some pretty ridiculously fast autofocus that I got to play around with. Now, the camera is, again, obviously one of those things that I need to spend more time with and that I'll be testing thoroughly for the full review, but for my limited hands-on time, it seemed to have some pretty great poise as a great follow-up to the S6. Uh, and of course, top-end specs again. So in the US, the new Snapdragon 820 chip, four gigabytes of RAM, and the latest version of Android, and they brought back the micro SD card slot, so you have expandable storage at your fingertips again. Overall, it's kind of a beast. Now, it's obviously not perfect. I mean, this thing is still going to be, well, number one, slippery. It's still a serious reflection and fingerprint magnet all the time, and it still has that tiny speaker at the bottom. It still doesn't have an IR blaster anywhere, or even USB Type-C. Uh, and it's totally still running the heavily skinned version of Android that people sometimes love and sometimes hate. But either way, it'll be a familiar experience for anyone who's used a Samsung smartphone recently. So those bright, super saturated colors and big, round, colorful icons. It is actually a toned down version compared to previous versions of the legendary TouchWiz. But yeah, there's no escaping the Samsung look here. There's a couple new features in this software, like the always on display, which will show you the time and date and battery at all times on that AMOLED display. You can even choose to have like a calendar show up there or decide what information is always up. And that barely sips any battery since it's AMOLED. And on the S7 Edge, there's also an improved Edge panel, which gives you way more options to put stuff over there. You can put your favorite apps. You can put custom tasks, which should be really useful. Uh, you can also get people and news. But yeah, I really like the idea of being able to swipe in and launch a custom action within an app, like an, a task for that tasks panel. So that used to be something you needed a third party app from the Play Store to do. Cool to see that built in here. So overall, look, this is a safe bet for Samsung as a phone and it's gonna be a super solid smartphone. Uh, my preference between the two right now is probably going to be the S7 Edge just because of that bigger battery, but also I like bigger phones anyway. But yeah, if you were looking for something wild and radical and crazy, you're probably gonna wanna look elsewhere, maybe keep waiting or go with something like the G5, but Samsung has stuck to their roots with this one, and I like it. Can't wait to get it in for the full review. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.